Do you ever buy a stock when it's dropping, lose money, and wonder, why did I ever do that? And whether there's a better way to trade. Well, there is, and in this video, we show you the trading pattern and trading philosophy that will help you capture trading profits with that stock that's oversold or overbought. Hi, I'm Mike Bellafieri, co-founder of SMB Capital, a proprietary trading firm located in New York City, and the author of the trading classic, One Good Trade, and the playbook. Founded in 2005, SMB Capital trades stocks and options and futures and crypto, both as discretionary and automated traders. In this video, a developing trader at the firm shares in step-by-step -step detail a trade example using the V pattern. Lance Breitstein, former number one trader at a tier one trading firm, and I mentor this trader on this pattern during this video. And see us judge with a numerical score whether this trader made a good enough trade for him to reach his trading goals or whether this tra developing trader, perhaps like you, needs to do better. So first, Lance, glad you're going to be on this. Um, I think some of your ideas helped me with this trade. Um, and yeah, so let's just get right into it. So this was a trade I made on natural gas, um, a first red day meme reversion over extension trade on April 18th. Uh, I played this using options and equity both in UNG and KOLD, which is both the bull and bear um, ETF for natural gas. All right, Nathan, tell us who you are and where you are at in terms of your SMB journey. Yeah, so <laughs> it's been quite I mean, a journey at this are, point. But... <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. Um, so, I mean, I reached out to Bella my freshman year in college when I was still losing money every day, um, you know, in the, in the bad parts of the trading journey. Uh, and I got an internship with them the summer of my sophomore year and then the summer of my junior year i was working in new york uh, once covid was a bit of uh, issue behind us i got to go out there on the desk and work out there for a month and now i have three more weeks of school um, i'm gonna graduate and then i move out to new york in july or august and I'm gonna start full time with smb so it's been quite a journey um, and I can say that being with SMB through these years has definitely uh, made me the trader that I am today. And I think over the next five or 10 years, it'll hopefully get me to the level I want to be at. So yeah, that's how my journey has started with you guys. You're a senior intern heading towards being a new hire. Yes, senior intern to new hire. All right, and Lance, why don't you tell us, since you were referenced here, uh, who you are and uh, how you're helping us and big. I'm Lance Breitstein and I was the top trader at a tier one prop firm and I had over a decade of trading experience while also running their Chicago office and in that time I've managed to mentor and train dozens of traders and so I'm here at SMB to help implement best practices and share some of the knowledge I've accumulated to help you all be the best traders you can become. Nathan, will you run through this trade? Yes, I'm excited to. Let's get into it. So, um, you know, I have to talk through the bigger picture. This is not a, a market trade where I'm using the indexes like the SPY or the NASDAQ, um, but just some general context of where we were in the markets. Uh, at this stage, we were still above the February 24th Russia invasion lows and bear flagging below all key uh, moving averages on both the SPY and NASDAQ. So, uh, and sentiment was still pretty bearish. Um, the fear was inflation is really high. The Fed has to act. We're not going to have that easy money that we've had for the past two years and stocks are probably going lower, which in hindsight, they went much lower. So. If you want to learn three more real world setups that our traders use, including the simple setup that we teach all of our new traders and the setup that turned one of our traders into a seven figure big money earner, check out the free webinar that we're currently running. Just go ahead and click the link that should be appearing now at the top right hand corner of your screen. That will open up the free registration page in a new window. So don't worry, you won't lose this video. 
You can also visit tradingworkshop.com to register for this free intensive workshop. You're going to learn more in a couple of hours from this trading workshop than from years of online education. So here is a bigger picture view of the natural gas chart. Um, we'll get into some of the statistics of it, but just I wanted to show the look on the daily. Um, you can pretty clearly see that over the past uh, month, basically starting when Russia invaded Ukraine, uh, the trend just accelerated to the upside almost exponentially. Um, I mean, there's a lot of those fundamental reasons why that would happen, especially when Russia invaded. Um, Ukraine and Russia are big exporters of natural gas. Uh, Europe was in a supply crunch. The U.S. was not able to catch up um, in you know, providing that supply. So the world has a natural gas shortage, same with a shortage in basically every other commodity right now. Um, and so that is what led to this extension in the natural gas price and eventually the trade that took place. Okay, so let me tell you what we do here. So there are gonna be 10 variables that we grade Nathan on. We're gonna be giving a playbook scorecard, as we call it. And we're gonna grade Nathan on his stock selection, on the big picture, which he's doing right here, on trade strategy, on intraday fundamentals, on technical analysis, on reading the tape, on trade management, on technology, on his review, what he can do better, and on the diligence of his presentation. Now, as we know, Nathan is a senior intern, and so we expect him to get above an 85 for him to be tracking to be reaching, to be doing the work, to be reaching the next level that he wants to in his trading, to be doing the work that we think is going to allow him to achieve the goals that he sets for himself and the standards that we set for our traders. So if you break that down, anytime he gets less than an 8.5 on any of these individual scores, you know, what we're signaling to him is he needs to do better next time and here's how he needs to do uh, better. And so in grading you on your big picture on a, on a scale of one to 10, uh, we're going to give you an eight. And if you go back to the last slide, what I would love for you to add and what we want you to add to be getting to that uh, acceptable score is I want to know the key levels in the SPY that are most important. I want to know the key levels and the cues that are most important. I like how you point out that we're under these key moving averages, but I don't know how far away we are to the next important technical levels. And you want to be pinpointing that out in your bigger picture because that's going to matter. If we're super far away from the next resistance area on spies or cues or whatever the important ETF is or indice is, then we're going to trade that differently than if we're just below it or right near it. Okay, let's go to the next, uh, let's go to the next one, next couple of slides. So here are the intraday fundamentals for um, the natural gas idea. Some statistics, natural gas was up 68% in the uh, one month prior to this day. Uh, just like to emphasize how extreme that is. That is, I, I, didn't, I didn't find any data where we had a move that intense in a commodity. Um, so we're super extended from the 10 and 20 day. Uh, and there was no prior relief day in over a week. Um, the hourly uh, was extending from major trend lines. Um, so in short, the trend was accelerating. And that's exactly what you want to see when you are beginning to stock a trade for um, that mean reversion or the uh, you know rubber band trade, as some would say. Uh, the daily moves were getting extended. This is something Lance talks about um, and something that has probably been one of the biggest focuses for me for these overextension trades. You want to see that range expansion because if you're just having these grind up days higher and higher, you know, if to the downside, let's say the grind days to the downside, you're not really having that capitulation or blow off. And at that point, you're just catching a falling knife or fighting the trend. And that's not the trade we want to be making. Um, and finally, so there were 
approaching this day, about the day before or a couple of days before, you started seeing headlines about you know, natural gas at a 14 year high, um, European supply crunch, the US doesn't have enough natural gas to get us through the summer. Uh, and so when you start seeing like Bloomberg and the Wall Street Journal and CNBC all posting these um, really extreme sentiment articles, basically, that's how I use it, kind of the sentiment check. Uh, I mean, to me that for these type of trades, it usually signals we're getting close to that short term extreme um, and volume was picking up. So that was signaling that we are definitely getting to that short term extreme. Um, this day was the highest volume day. Uh, for that entire up move. Um, so that is the blow off type of volume you want to see. And we were approaching on natural gas that eight psychological level, um, which is significant as well. Um, some other stats, oil had already topped March 7th. So about a month prior, oil made that parabolic move. Sentiment was extremely stretched. Um, trend was ex accelerating and range was expanding. So these are all things that I definitely want to see as I begin watching this trade for that mean reversion. And then just uh, for UNG and KOLD, so UNG is the triple leverage bull ETF. So as natural gas goes up 1%, UNG will go up 3%. Um, and this is correlated to that natural gas price. For KOLD, it is the triple leverage bear ETF. So natural gas goes um, up 1%, KOLD goes down 3%. A couple um, minor things, if, if I can uh, chip in there. Um, yeah. So first, I love what you're talking about, about uh, price expansion, because what you touched on about not wanting just a steady grind higher is just so, so, so important to me. I really need an acceleration in that. If something has a slope of positive one and we're just steadily going, I never, ever want to be sure in that. The most important difference that people miss is you need that acceleration in price over time. So that is huge, couldn't agree more. Uh, one thing I recommend to even take a step further is when you cite the volume increase, what I love to do is even quantify that. And so one thing I've found is, what I like to see is on those blow off days is ideally even 2x the volume or on pace to do 2x the volume of that prior day. And what's amazing is that prior day is even off a heightened base as well. So when you're getting 2x on that, that blow off day, you're really talking so many multiples of what had otherwise been a normal day. Then one final nitpick on me, uh, if I'm not mistaken with UNG, I actually, I actually don't think this is uh, triple levered. Um, I think UNG is simply just the prompt month futures contract, but uh, the, the KOLD I do is triple levered, but, but not the UNG. Just to nip okay. there. Yep. Yeah. So that was my, my mistake. I got those two caught up to each other. Um, but yeah, so the volume, I definitely should begin tracking that. I think that is really important to build a database of these blow off days. Like, and I do think I don't have the data on that. Maybe you were aware was this two times the prior day volume? It's, it's certainly um, at least a heuristic I use. And sure, sometimes it, it, it won't be, but I would say the more the better. And uh, I think in the absolute best ones, you will see uh, even more than, than 2x. Like if you were to look at MSTR or Carvana on some of those uh, bottoming days from, from a week or two ago, uh, you know, those were even doing you know, 30, 40% of its float in a single day. And obviously not the case with, with an ETF like, like these or an ETN as, as they are. Um, but yeah, definitely worth studying and adding to your future uh, playbooking. Yeah, definitely. I will definitely begin tracking that. Um, okay, so I think we can move to the next slide. These are just some basic statistics about UNG. Um, the catalyst is we're short term overextended in natural gas. Uh, the theme is a market with the focus on, with the sole focus basically on inflation and the energy crisis stemming from the war in Ukraine and natural gas at a 14 year high. Um, and the setup is a short term overextension. Okay, so I'll jump in here, stock selection. On a scale of 1 to 10 is a 10 out of 10. I really like how this is so super extended. We want to find stocks that either have a news catalyst or a technical catalyst. To me, this is a technical catalyst and, and a, a really strong technical catalyst. It's, it's at a price that's not sustainable. It's at a price where we want to really be watching. And so something extended to the long side, something overextended to the downside 
is, is really, really terrific stock selection. So 10 out of 10 on your stock selection. Uh, in terms of your intraday fundamentals, uh, I got you coming in at about a 9.2, well, 9.2. Uh, the one thing, and, and I am nitpicking here, but just to sort of give you some feedback, um, tracking specifically what news catalyst makes the market come in a little bit, that, that specific tracker would have been a little bit more interesting. But good, but, but strong and, you know, very solid there on intraday fundamentals. All right, let's move to technical analysis. So um, this is the daily and to the um, right side, you'll have some um, intraday price action, but let's focus on the daily for now. So um, you can clearly see just the way the trend is accelerating. Um, just from the past month, how it's just kind of grind, pull back, grind, pull back, grind, pull back, just a steady trend higher. But then something changes, um, about in the last like four days up to this blow off move, you can just see how we're extending from the 10 day. Um, and that's something I look for. Uh, and like I said, on the other slides, the hourly trend is accelerating. So we're now getting into that type of move, like Bella said, that is just not sustainable. Um, and, and you can just see how different the price action looks on the daily. Like that is a clear acceleration of the trend and expansion on those daily bars. Um, and on that blow off day, you had the gap, that pretty large gap from the prior day uh, to the open of that next day. And that is also a, a check in our favor. Um, probably one of my favorite signs of this trade was the volume, something that you know Lance made the point of. You, you really wanna see that pretty high volume on these blow off days. Um, and so, yeah, so we're, we're looking for that rubber band snapback type of trade. So here's the intraday look on the blow off day. Um, you can see through the morning, we're just holding that steady trend um, to the upside. We're just kind of grinding and grinding. Volume is definitely elevated. So this day was about, um, I think like three R volt through this move higher in the morning. Um, but still, if we're using the right side of that V analogy, you don't really want to be shorting this uh, until it breaks that trend because at that point, I mean, who knows how high this can go, right? We could have gone 28, 29, 30, 32. You just don't want to be stepping in front of it until that trend changes. But it's also like important to not forget the daily chart and get caught up on the intraday stuff. That's something that I sometimes have an issue with, like getting caught up on the intraday action on these turn days. Um, but so the notable action on this is once we get to that 28 area, you can see there's something different happens in this move. Uh, there's two things that happen. So you have the volume to make note of on that breakout and then the failed breakout. That's the highest volume of the day, even more than the open and through the morning. Um, and you have a break of that trend. So now you're on the other side of the V and that's when things can start getting interesting for uh, you know executing and getting involved in this trade. I think that's really fantastic analysis and and assessment of, of why you want to be on the right side of the V and applying it there. It's the perfect analogy and I think that that you identifying how hard that crack was on, on the volume is, is, is really, really astute as well because that was a very big tell there. Um, one thing actually I think is worth thinking about for the future. Um, I think it could even be worth looking at the underlying future charts. Oh, I do have that, the next one. Oh, nice. Sorry, I, I totally forgot. So yeah, you can see, so where that breakout occurred was also right at the eight psychological round number. And to me, the fact that we lifted there, um, we're already accelerated on the daily, we're accelerated intraday. Um, the fact that we broke out there and then stuffed super hard on just extremely high volume. Uh, and failed super hard. And then we had that bounce back into that lower range level and fail. At that point, I mean, for me, it's like, all right, risk on, you know, this is kind of where you want to start laying into the short. Um, and so that's the underlying, and, and I was, I had both of these up at the same time. You definitely, if you're using, if you're taking a trade like this with the, like a commodity or an underlying asset, you have to be watching both at the same time.
Yeah, um, and, and well, so actually what I was, I mean, I, and I kind of agree more with, with your assessment of, of that intraday and, and the ability to then short that versus the high of the day. Um, not sure if this was included, but I think actually on the futures, if you included uh, the daily chart, I think the extent of that, that trend, it was even more apparent of just how many up days uh, it was because obviously on the futures you have more hours of trading so you get a much kind of cleaner picture without the gaps of just how wild uh, that that trend really was. I think it even might be a little bit more clearer than, than UNG. Yeah, I didn't include the future chart. I probably should have. Um, but yeah, that's that again, just another variable to show you how extended we were. Yeah, um, exactly. So yeah, I just like the biggest thing for me for this trade that I saw that that got me involved was that failed breakout at that A level and then the heavy volume um, and then that lower high. Uh, I, I just think at that point, you know, the trade is on, you can risk high day. It's pretty high probability in your favor at that point. Lance, is that kind of how you viewed it as well? Could not agree more. Yep, it's, it's such a perfect stop for it. You've got a lot of indicators aligning between I mean, what's beautiful is you have the intraday and the daily screaming the same signals, whether it's the volume uh, and, 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 and everything else, the price expansion. And the best part really was just that you're now structuring it after a turn and you're giving it the proper stop. And uh, it's, it's, it's perfect. Yeah. And, um, you know, like the best trades for me are when the daily and the intraday line up like that, that China, the FXI bounce trade, same idea, like all these overextensions that work the best, you got to have the, like the intraday and the daily lineup. So that's also why, you know, I was pretty, uh, I was really liking the way this trade was setting up. All right. I'll just jump in here. So technical analysis, uh, we're going to give you 10 out of 10 on that. I like how you were very specific about what you were looking for with your technicals. And so the combination of this being overextended on your daily and your intraday. Secondly, a recognition by you, an astute savvy recognition by you about how the highest volume comes in towards the top. And that certainly can be a subset of turns when that additional volume comes in on an intraday basis. And then the break of the trend line. So you're not just saying this is over bought, you're being specific about why you think it's a good short for these overbought conditions. 10 out of 10. So tape, I do not have the tape for this. Um, I mean, mostly because this was, it kind of took like many hours to play out. Um, and it was, it, 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 the tape was not the biggest factor in this trade, like we kind of just went over. So I didn't have the tape for this. Um, but basically, if you, if I did, you know, you just want to be watching it at that 28 level. Volume should be crazy. Speed should be a little bit different. Um, and when it failed, you should definitely see that, you know, the stuff through 28 pretty clearly on the tape. Well, let me jump in here. So, and I, I love how you're taking lessons from what Lance is posting on Twitter and you're incorporating that into your trades. And I love how you picked up his important concept on the V and found a trade right away to do that. That's, that's terrific. I may have a little bit more information on why Lance has been successful since I've, I've seen more of his trading for more years than you, but uh, I, and Lance, correct me if I'm wrong, but one of the really great best practices that you've incorporated into your trading is to go back to big moments in big trades and to have video uh, to record your screens continually so that you can go back and find those big moments in those big trades and rewatch them and keep archives of those big moments and those big turns and and what's leading up to those big trades and that's really helped you to get better on your a plus trades on your big trades is that fair to say and Yep, and so one of the things I was even going to make a video on is, is exactly that practice, is building up this database and all these different types of trade categories of what those key couple minutes look like. And so to Bella's point, while I would agree, like yes, the trade unfolded over hours and, and days, 
But really, that that topping pattern at, at eight in that gas or 28 in UNG, you really probably could have reduced that down to a mere couple of minutes, and those are the key minutes, right? Like those minutes might be worth, uh, you know, those couple minutes might be priceless, whereas I agree that the rest of it is probably a, a necessary. And, you know, to your point, like obviously, a ET, ETN and, and a, a commodity future is going to have a less uh, legible tape than, say, a single stock uh, moving on its own. Uh, but, but nevertheless, I think it's worth building up that database of what this subset of turn looks like, or even just knowing, like, look, this is a turn in a commodity uh, product. And therefore, this might look different than, say, a turn in a name like Tesla or a name like Carvana. All right, so we're going to give you 5 out of 10 on reading the tape because Lance thinks this is really important and you didn't necessarily include a snippet of the tape here. So next time you see, a, you know, A, record your screens at all times, and B, go back and capture those turn points, those most important points, and put them into your playbooks. I would have yeah, given you a 10, though, totally because fair. I'm a nice we'll guy. The, uh, 5 out of 10. I definitely should have had the <laughs> You do not, definitely. and I want to comment on this, and I, I, I want to comment on low scores like this. So I think you would agree to this as well. The object here is to help Nathan become the trader that he wants to be. And this is a hard job. And yeah. we want to be clear about the expectations that the market has on a developing trader for them to get to their goals. And so for me to be nice is not going to help him get to his goals. It's my job to be clear and transparent about the work that goes into him actually getting there. And this is something that he needs to include for him to reach his goals. And, and what is important, I think, is, is to that point, you never know how long it will take to get another rep of something like this. And what can be in your mind a day later, a week later, a month later, uh, when you're in year three or year five or year 10, you will want the database of the 10 different instances in your career when an ETN or, or a, a futures product has cracked like that. And uh, man, the amount of traders that probably wish they could go back and get the recordings of some of those priceless moments, uh, you know, once it's, once it's gone, it's gone. So I, I hear you, Bella. Cool. And I will just add, I mean, I do record my, t my screens in the morning and I have a lot of valuable tape. And that probably was one of the biggest things that got me from unprofitable to break even to profitable, just rewatching the tape on those important moments. So yeah, definitely a best practice I'm going to keep up with. So here's my trade management of UNG. Um, I give myself like a D minus uh, D for the way I traded this for how, you know, the opportunity that was here. Um, so on that grind higher, I, I, I started in some like small puts early. So I'll just go over how I was going to play this actually. So I was thinking um, UNG, I wanted to take um, puts on. And then for KOLD, I was going to scale uh, equity long. That's like the inverse. So when uh, natural gas was going to crack, KOLD was going to gap up and go. So. And I think the reason playing puts on a trade like this is super powerful is because when you have such a big gap in either direction or a, a big move, when it does have that rubber band snapback, um, you know, the options will explode because of the IV and it can just make the trade really um, powerful. So I did start trying some short on that grind higher. And this is kind of one of my biggest issues still today. I'm over eager. Like when I know a trade is close, I, I get impatient and I start trying it before that turn may be in. But what I never do is I don't play like that game where you just add, add, add. So, you know, I was fine taking paper cuts, trying to catch the turn, but I would never have just been adding, adding, adding and hoping that it was going to crack and, you know, cause that's really dangerous. So that grind higher, not happy that I was trying a little early. And unfortunately I had a doctor's appointment midday right when we had that crack because i actually had strep throat so i was getting antibiotics um so i wasn't there to you know start scaling when we had that blow off and crack which is unfortunate but you know once that turn was in that's when i got way more aggressive on the option side because i had that hard stop at high a day and you can see the triangles here were where i started scaling more puts um 
So that was on the, the uh, that turn day, how I managed that. So I was buying the puts, the weekly 27s, 26, and next week 25s. I also took weekly 23s. Um, I just thought the RR there, you know, they were so cheap put premium wise that it just made sense to go for that. If we had, a, like if we had the crack to the 10 or 20 day, which was definitely possible for this type of trade. I was just thinking that was worth putting on that um, contract as well. Um, and so the next day, um, we walked in with an 8% gap down in natural gas, which was, you know, that's a really nice way for this trade to play out. Um, and my overall targets for everything were the 10 and 20 day. That's just, that was the targets I was going for. But when I have a gap that big, I, with the options, the way they moved, um, I, I, I had to take some off. I think just because of the way the IV worked and how much I was up and how the trade played out, I took off um, 60 to 70 percent of everything on the open, um, which I don't know, Lance, if how you would criticize that with such a large gap. But for me on a trade like with when I saw it was my second biggest overnight trade. So I, I you know, maybe I was focusing on P&L taking off that much so soon. But um, yeah, that so I. That, that was how I um, executed that on the next day. So, so first for you guys, I think one nice thing is the more experience you get and the more times and practice you have with those see it moments where everything aligns. Like you're already saying, like generally I'm often over eager, but like I always see it when it happens. And I think what happens is with experience, you learn to just trust yourself. And you know that when that moment comes, you're gonna recognize it. And then you also get okay with the fact that if that moment doesn't come and you don't see it, well then that's fine too, because what that means is it didn't set up properly for you. And so this is one of those things where it's like, true freedom of FOMO is being able to say, this is making a big move. I'm looking to play it in X, Y, and Z fashion. If X, Y, and Z fashion does not occur, then I am okay missing this move despite it being big. And that is, that is hard for a lot of people, but it's so, so important, right? Because it's not enough for something to just make a big move. It needs to move in a way that is capturable for us. So if this cracked, then went to highs, you know, 12 different times, like look, even if it eventually goes down, it was not capturable for our system, and so be it. There's nothing wrong with that. So I think you'll even become better at, at avoiding the FOMO with experience. Um, regarding your decision to scale out of there, uh, I, I, I did pretty similar. So the way I handle it is, obviously that was a very, very large gap, and, and especially including that, that follow through. Um, and trades are dynamic, right? The risk reward when UNG has pulled back to 23 is way different than when we're still at say 2750 or something or 27. Uh, so I did scale out, but usually um, I try to at least hold a little bit of, of, of a trailer position just to still my, my overall proper stop, which tends to be uh, you know prior day highs or something. And, and one other thing, I'll even give you a little bit of, of, of a layup on because I'd love to hear uh, what I know the answer will be is I'm sure a lot of people that are listening or watching the video might be saying like, wait a second, how, how would you, how is it that you gave yourself a D minus? Like, I don't get it. The trade worked and you made money. So can you explain why, like how, how those two things can be true? Cause I would totally agree that it's not mutually exclusive. Yeah. Um, I mean, even though this was a great trade, like P and L wise, and I guess the way it played out, uh, I, I, for the opportunity, I could have traded it way better and I could have made two or three times the amount I did. So that's why, uh, just like the way I was trying to, like trying to catch that turn early instead of just like you said, sit on your hands. Cause like when I know it's turned, then I can really lay into it and put on the risk. Like, why am I trying to find the top? It's like, there's no need to find the top when because when these things crack that's it and it'll be obvious and that's when you can really lay into it um and put on that risk um and then 
another th reason, like I was also expecting that morning of like that gap down, I thought we were going to have some sort of bounce into some prior day level to like reshort against. That was what I was hopeful for that day, like to lay into more size on that day for continuation. But it just went straight down um, w with an 8% gap and then just going another three to 5% lower. I was just kind of like, whoa, that, that's, that's pretty uh, odd to me. So what I love is yeah. that you are essentially rating yourself and grading yourself not on the PL or the outcome but how you think you could be trading it so you're grading yourself to your potential and to your ability rather than just the outcome right because you can have a negative trade but you did everything right and you might even you can even grow and be improving in a negative trade or vice versa so that i think that was really really great and one thing i would touch on is to your comment um, about about the PL is like, yes, we're all human and we do ideally trade our PL sometime, but in an ideal world, we're not really trading the PL or being up a lot on a huge gap, but we're trading how dynamically that expected value has changed due to that gap. So I'll never try to let the PL influence my trading so much as what is this position and what does this opportunity deserve? What is the proper stop? What is the proper size? What is the proper action in this moment, irrespective of the uh, irrelevant number on my screen? Yeah, that, I mean, that's such a good point. Um, and I think also the um, that FXI trade and the China trade from the prior month, that kind of got into my head where I also did the same thing where I took too much off right on the open and then everything just kept going through the whole day. And I was like, oh, I mean, I sh probably shouldn't make that same mistake. So there was some of that using a prior trade that got into my head, um, but that's okay. Um, and then, so I scaled out more the next day and then the 23 puts um, uh, way down there on the 22nd, all the way at the end of the week uh, when it just kept going lower. So here's KOLD, similar idea to UNG. Uh, this one, I took way more uh, just equity instead of options because I didn't know how, I, I didn't calculate, you know, the way the triple um, leverage would play out. So this one, uh, I started scaling when uh, natural gas got pretty extended through the upside. Um, this one, I mean, I guess you could say I was on the wrong side of the V at that point. However, I was not full size. So uh, this is something like Nate Michaud talks about a lot that kind of influenced me. Like it's okay to, um, start in small like scalers and feelers but you're not getting like if your full size is you know i don't know x amount of shares you don't want to be putting on uh 50 of that that's not a feeler that's half your size so this is these scales were like 10 like 5 10 percent at a time um and then once it did crack and we started holding higher lows on kold at the end of the day in the afternoon uh, that's when I started putting on more size and I took another options position buying the 10 calls for this one. Um, again, same rationale for UNG. Once it cracked, that's risk on. Uh, same idea, just to the inverse for the long. Um, this one, I sold uh, all the equity on the open. I tried to get cute and like just a little fancy with it and add more uh, through the day, but that made me a little micro focused and uh, yeah, I just got flat around 9.4 on the equity and then the 10 calls the, the day later when we got to 10, um, which was, this was like a nice uh, addition to that UNG trade. And so, yeah, that was the trade management. All right. So uh, trade management, I, I'm going to give you a score. So you got 10 out of 10 on trade management. I like, I'm going to grade you not necessarily on how well you manage the trade but how well you thought through how you managed the trade, which I think you did very well. All right, moving forward. Great. So improvements, our trade review, uh, this was an A++ overextension. Um, it presented a bunch of different areas where you could have got involved with the hard stop, uh, with the real risk. So not just that trying to guess the top or add, add, add. Um, the best entries were after the intraday blow off. That's really important. Like having that patience was what made this trade really well work really well um so trusting myself that was something i could have done a little bit better with the option side since everything was so cheap and i knew deep down we're really close to that crack day maybe we go one more day higher or gap up but like i could have put on more options um just to really maximize that trade second thing i could have put on ung equity which i did not too that was something i could have improved on if i'm short the 
uh, if I'm taking puts, I can also take equity short. Uh, that's just something to add into the playbook. Um, we talked about this and just the biggest thing, this was a stress-free trade because I wasn't early and because I was involved at the right time and the right day. These, I've gotten myself into this position before on different overextension trades where I am a day or two early and I am just playing that game where I'm adding and then I'm drawing down and it's just really not fun. So being on the right side of that B makes the biggest difference PL wise and for the mental capital. So um, yeah, that, that, that's uh, basically the summary. Um, and just trusting myself is kind of uh, going to get me to the next level at this point in, in my career, I think. Trade review 9.5. Let's just make an extra distinction that you're trusting yourself because of X, Y, Z. You're not just blanketly trusting your feel for this, but you're trusting it because of the overall setup that has very specific variables. And I want you acknowledging that. These are specific variables in my playbook. This is an A plus trade. That's why I'm trusting myself. They're present, the variables are present. That's why I'm trusting myself. All right, good. And I, I love this slide, actually. I think this is probably in the whole deck the most important slide because of how explicitly you're saying what you could have done differently, why and where. The, the level of specificity is so amazing and it's all on stuff that will help you grow in the future. This is actually, I think, the most value add and the most uncomfortable part of the review for a trader to do, but it's where uh, people gain the most benefit. So this, this was uh, my favorite part. Okay, diligence of preparation uh, overall on eight. And I wanna talk about that. 8.5 is where you're trending towards doing the work that's necessary for you to be good. There's a couple of things that we want you adding next time. So uh, one is technology. So how can you use technology that we have on our desk to help you to find more trades like this? What are the filters potentially that you can build to find more trades like this? What are the scripts that you can potentially build that help you to have traded this uh, across more products or put more risk on? That was, um, Brandon took um, a similar trade. I don't know if he executed in the same fashion, but we, we were talking about it the following day and um, he, he's really good with that. A coding and, and um, that automation stuff. So just working with someone like that is going to be helpful. Okay, good. So we're going to give you an incomplete there. And then we want to have a trade strategy slide. And so we're going to give you an incomplete there. The trade strategy slide is, you know, I'm looking for one, two, three, ABC. And when I see that, then I'm going to put on this amount of risk. And my target is this. And my uh, exit for if I'm wrong is this and being clear about that. So it's, you know, what's the trade? What's the trade strategy for it? Here are the details for how I go about trading that. So we want you, you know, if you were to see this trade again, how would you define how you're gonna attack it? That's what we mean by trade strategy. So Kurt will add up the scores and post your score online, 69.7. Now obviously your incompletes bring you down a little bit. So uh, next time we got to get you above 85. There's actually a lot of really good stuff in here. I mean, some of the slides you just crushed. You know, some of the stock selection you just crushed. Technical analysis you just crushed. Trade management, I thought you did really, really well. Lance really liked your review. So a lot of the stuff's really good. Just got to do that on some of the other things. And the reason why we think these things are important is because this is how you put together a really terrific playbook, which help you, helps you to grow as a trader. So almost. Great. Well, I appreciate your guys' time and um, advice. And yeah, I'm excited to keep taking these uh, overextensions and hopefully get better and better. So thank you guys. Hey, go ahead and click our subscribe button so you don't miss any of the videos that we're producing for you in the trading community. And please take the time to add your feedback in the comment section for what videos you'd like for us to produce next and what you found helpful from this video from all of us at SMB. Train and trade well.